it's Dan here and today we're going to be talking about The Burning Land by Bernard Cornwell which is the fifth book in the Last Kingdom series which is a historical fiction set in the late Anglo-Saxon period. Now I've already done reviews of the previous books in this series so you can check them out if you're interested. I'll link some of them in the description. Now the concept of the series is that we follow an Anglo-Saxon warrior as he takes part in the uh, conflicts against the Vikings that lead to the creation of the Kingdom of England. But yeah, in this instalment of this excellent series, uh, we uh, start off with the usual formula which is like an elderly Uhtred, who's our main protagonist, uh, narrating his own life story. Um, and we skip forward about five years, I think, from the last book in the series. Now, Uhtred, during this time, has been the commander of the garrison of London. And now the Saxons of Wessex and of Southern Mercia, which uh, both areas are under the actual or the de facto rule of uh, Alfred the Great, or who will become known as Alfred the Great. Uh, and they're being threatened by the, the latest Viking invader who goes by the suitably horrific name of Harold Bloodhair. And of course, Uhtred uh, is heavily involved in leading the Saxon forces to fight against him, and obviously being a Bernard Cornwell book, bloody chaos ensues. So, uh, is it any good? Uh, well, I was looking forward to getting to this point in the series, because uh, I remember this book, you know, for some reason it stuck out as being one of my favourites, so I was kind of, yeah, like I say, looking forward to getting to it. I don't know if it's because uh, it's the first, this is, I think it's the first Bernard Cornwall book I ever read. But anyway, yeah, I'm not normally too good at remembering exactly what happens in every book of a long series. You know, they kind of end up blurring into one another a little bit, generally. Uh, but yeah, like I say, this one stuck out for some reason. But yeah, anyway, it didn't quite live up to uh, how good I remembered it being. And that's not to say that it's a bad book by any stretch of the imagination. You know, even uh, a below par Cornwell novel is, you know, better than most. Uh, but there were some aspects of this book that didn't live up to the, you know, really high standards that he set in the previous four. But anyway, first let's talk about some of the good points because there's still uh, plenty of them. Uh, and you know, for me, the main, the main one, as as always in these series, is the character development of Uhtred, our main protagonist. He's sort of reached a point in this book where his arrogance, which has always been like a strong character trait for him, you know, he's, uh, he's able to harness it now and, and use it to inspire people with the confidence that it, it allows him to portray. And this is particularly evident uh, in the, the, the Battle of Farnham, which uh, towards the end of the first act. He's also uh, coming more aware of what the role of a, a leader and the role of a warrior in his society actually entails, which is, you know, uh, ideally to protect those who can't protect themselves. And this has kind of always underpinned his actions, but in this book he really starts to come to grips with it and begin to articulate it more. And he, he also continues on the road of uh, becoming more disillusioned with the, the ruling classes of his society, which kind of has the effect of him becoming, you know, when you put all this together, he becomes a champion of the, the downtrodden, you know, rather than just a champion full stop, which is kind of what he's been previously. Also, his uh, his relationship with his his war band, with you know his fellow warriors, uh, and with with Finnan in particular is fantastic. And the the character work that Cornwell has done in the previous books uh, really allows them now to have uh, an easy rapport with each other, and you know some really humorous moments. Uh, we also start to see the continuing uh, development of Ethelfled, who is King Alfred's daughter. Uh, she's been 
uh, increasing in, in importance as a character throughout the series as she's you know grown from a child into a, a young woman and she really comes into her own in this book and starts to influence events more directly and yet the uh, the events in this book you know without giving away any spoilers also play suit treads sort of dubious loyalty to the Saxon cause under its like greatest strain yet you know uh, his belief in you know Uhtred's belief in the power of oaths as binding to people uh, has been placed as as kind of central to his character by Cornwell but in this book after some personal tragedy uh, tragedy in Uhtred's life it, we he sort of slightly, only very slightly alters his definition of oaths, but it's quite an important uh, shift, I think, overall. You know, he describes them as uh, oaths, that is, as attempts by people to steer a course through the the seas of fate. But then, then he adds the the caveat that if the if the currents are too strong and someone gets pulled off course you know, following on with the metaphor, then, you know, it's not their fault if they get pulled off course and they have to and they have to break their word. Essentially, you know, he's saying, well, it's all in the lap of the gods, which is a slightly different viewpoint than we've seen before, or at least just moving towards uh, an extreme there. And this is kind of reinforced by Uhtred's belief in the pagan Norse religion, which... Uh, believes that the world is slowly sliding into chaos and it can't be improved it can only be survived and yet you know it's this as much as anything else that always puts him uh, in conflict with Alfred who's his sort of overlord because uh, Alfred is a, a strong Christian who is trying to bring God's kingdom, uh, you know, make it a reality in England, you know, trying to improve the world rather than see it slip into this chaos that Uhtred believes in. But yes, and, and also with Alfred, you know, despite uh, this conflict that he has with Uhtred and the fact that he, he does play a, a smaller role in this book than in uh, the previous ones, you know, Cornwell is still able to portray his his intelligence and his ability as an arch manipulator and as a, a man of ambition, you know, portrays that for, uh, fantastically. So, yeah, you know, clearly uh, I think there's a lot of positives, uh, you know, particularly in terms of the development of characters and their relationships and the development of the themes that run throughout the series. But where this book is not quite at the level of uh, the uh, earlier entries is, I think, in the, the pacing and in the plot and in the quality of the antagonists. Uh, so I'll go into that a little bit. You know, the, the problems with pacing and plot are, are kind of linked um, in that it feels kind of rushed, like Cornwell is trying to fit loads into this book and you're you're jumping around all over the place as you kind of you know really rush headlong towards this conclusion uh, and now Cornwell always you know writes pretty fast-paced books but you know this one was it was a bit much even even for me you know I think the the first act could quite easily have been a novel in its own right if it you know it could have been stretched out into a novel no problem and uh, its conclusion definitely felt sort of you know grand enough to be the climax of a story but it was all very rushed and, and like I say that feeling sort of continues throughout the book and also you know the first act it builds up these two main antagonists but after the the climax of the first act they're effectively just uh, you know removed as a threat and um, Haston who is a character that we've met before is reintroduced to take their place as the the main antagonist in the in the second and, and third acts but I think you know that combined with the sort of location hopping that, that Uhtred is doing throughout the whole novel it kind of adds up to just a real all over the place uh, feel. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel very focused. And also, um, 
In terms of the character development, I thought um, there was one character who I was a bit disappointed with, and uh, that was Ragnar, who I think he's a bit of a favourite character of mine, and I was a bit disappointed because it feels like he kind of uh, regresses in this novel. He's kind of just used as like um, a, a what-if version of Uhtred. Uh, uh, which I mean, it, it, he is what Uhtred could have been if he'd made different choices. And he's always been kind of symbolic of that in a way. But in this book, it feels like it's his sole purpose rather than him being a character in his own right, which uh, which I was a bit disappointed in. Yeah, because like I say, I, I, I enjoy reading about Ragnar. He's, he's been a really great character up to this point. So yeah, uh, The Burning Land by Bernard Cornwell. This is this is still a really good book, you know, even though it's maybe average by Bernard Cornwell standards, you know, most historical fiction writers would aspire to write books as good as Cornwell's average books. You know, overall, I think this this book is basically it's like it's a middle book in a series. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be set up for the later book. And as a result of that, the, the plot of this one kind of suffers a bit to allow for that to happen. But yeah, it's still I still highly recommend it. And I think, you know, if you've got this far in the series, then you're definitely not going to be uh, put off by this one at all. I mean, like I say, it's still a, a really great read. Uh, I powered through it uh, really quickly and enjoyed it along the way. So, um, yeah, Burn and Cornwell. <laughs> Last Kingdom series, The Burning Land. Yeah, definitely read this series. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye.